Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to learn on subtopic 10.5 on the blood groups of humans. So I hope you are ready with your paper and pen to take notes and let's do this. Okay, as usual, we have to go through the learning standards. So here in this subtopic, you should be able to describe the ABO blood group. Okay, correlate the ABO blood group with blood donation. Okay, describe rhesus factor and also reason out the incompatibility of rhesus factor in pregnancy. ABO blood group you have learned in your science form 3. Yeah, form 3 I guess. And now you are going to see the same thing but you are going to see extra in rhesus factor. Alright. Okay, now human blood. Now, the blood group you belong to depends on what you have inherited from your parents. Now, there's no difference in our blood color. Okay, there's no green. You have green, I have blue, you have black. No, no such thing. Okay, we are all having the same blood color and therefore we are all just the same but unique in our own way. Alright, now the difference is that in the human blood is actually due to the presence and absence of certain protein molecules which are called the antigens and the antibodies. Now the antigens are on the surface of the red blood cells and the antibodies are found in the blood plasma. Okay, we'll see that in the next slide. Okay, now the ABO blood system. Now based on the ABO blood system, human blood is classified into four different groups which are A, AB, uh, B and O. Now, the classification is based on the type of antigens present on the surface of the red blood cells and the types of antibodies present in the blood serum. Okay, so we have the antigen on the red blood cells and the uh, antibodies in the blood plasma. Now, let's look at the diagram here. Now, type A, blood type A, we have antigen A on the red blood cells. Type B, antigen B. Type AB, both A and B. And type O, there is no A or B antigens on the red blood cells. Okay, this you have learned in your form 3, so you should remember this. Now, the antibodies in the plasma. So now, if you have antigen A on the red blood cells, then in your blood plasma, you should have the anti-B antibody. The A antibody or anti-B. You don't like the B. Okay, you only like A. Alright, and then the antigen B on the red blood cells. Now, antigen A or anti-A antibodies in the blood plasma. Okay, for type B. For type AB, since you have both antigens on the red blood cells, so you have no antibody presence in the blood plasma. And type O, we have no antigens A or B all right, on the red blood cells, but we have both antibodies, anti-A and anti-B in the blood plasma. Now, donation. Blood A, we cannot have B or AB blood group entering our body. So we can only have the A or O. So we can only receive from A and O and we can only give to them. Okay, A and AB. Now uh, type B, we cannot have uh, A or AB blood group. We can only have from B and O. Type AB, you can have from everyone. You are the universal recipient. You can take from everyone and you just don't want to give to anyone. You are the, the stingy one. Okay, type O, we can only receive blood from blood group O, okay, because we are the universal donor, we are the kind one, we are the generous one, we can donate to everyone, but not, uh, but not everyone will actually repay us back by donating to us, okay, all right, now, blood types here, okay, um, let's look at the antibody action on antigen and its effect, now, anti-A antibody, Okay, anti-A antibody in the serum will actually act against the antigen A on the red blood cells of blood group A to coagulate the red blood cell. We call it as agglutination. Okay, and antibody, sorry, anti-B antibody in the serum will act against antigen B on the red blood cells, okay, of blood group B to agglutinate the red blood cells. Now, if blood agglutination occurs in the blood vessel, the agglutinated, uh, agglutinated blood will actually block the blood flow and it can actually cause death. Okay, so it has to be compatible. Um, type A, we have red blood cell with surface antigen A, correct? So if you have type blood, 
type A, your plasma contains NTB antigen, so antibodies, so it will actually attack the type B surface of antigen. So you cannot uh, receive blood from B. Alright, same goes with B, A, B, and O. Now let's look at blood transfusion. Now, uh, blood transfusion transfusion must happen when there is compatibility. The blood group uh, of the donor must uh, be compatible with the recipient, recipient to prevent agglutination. So this is very important. If you are a regular blood donor, then you know that your blood is compatible to who and not. And blood transfusion is very important nowadays. It can actually help people survive. Uh, okay, let's look at the research system. Now, the research system is a blood classification system based on the research factor, the RH factor, and it is genetically determined. Now, research factor refers to research protein known as antigen D, found on the cell membranes of the red blood cells. Okay, we call it a research antibody or anti-D antibody, antigen D. Okay, it causes agglutination and hemolysis of red blood cells of the RH positive individual. It does not present automatically in the beginning in the blood of the RH or rhesus negative individual. However, rhesus negative will develop in the RH antibody only when exposed to RH positive, rhesus positive blood. Now, for blood donation, okay, RH positive, rhesus positive can receive from rhesus negative, but rhesus negative cannot receive from rhesus positive. If rhesus positive blood antigen D is present, okay, rhesus positive, we have antigen D, enters the blood or the body of the recipient who is rhesus negative, the blood will produce a matching anti-D antibody. The first time this happens, the body will not give any effects. However, if it happens for the second time, the anti-D antibody, okay, anti-D antibody in the blood of the recipient will cause agglutination and hemolysis of the red blood cells and this can actually lead to that. Okay, so if you can see, uh, this is when we do a um, research factor uh, determination. Okay, when we have the, how do we determine whether it is positive or it is negative. Now, when there is clumping here for NTA, NTB, okay, and research, uh, anti research, we have clumping. So, this is A, okay, uh, blood group A. If the clumping only happens in antigen B, then it is B. But if there is clumping in rhesus, then we have B positive. Okay, positive if you have clamp clumping of the red blood cells, if you uh, insert the anti rhesus uh, substance. Okay, and for O negative, there won't be any clumping. Okay, either anti A or anti B or anti rhesus. So, anti rhesus means that when there is no uh, clumping, it is said to be negative. So this is actually determination which we can actually do in the laboratory okay, to find out whether we are research positive or research negative. Okay now, so the research problem is now, yeah, it's pretty simple but it only actually uh, becomes a problem when a person is pregnant. So this happens when the mother's blood is RH or research negative, okay, but the fetal blood is research positive. Mother is negative, fetal is positive. Now, during the last month of pregnancy, the fetal blood cells may enter the mother blood, correct? Through placenta. Now, when this happens, this will cause the lymphocyte of the mother to produce anti-D antibodies. Okay, to produce anti-D antibodies to destroy the antigen D from the fetal blood. Okay, but however, this anti-D antibodies, they do not form fast enough for the first time to give a negative impact on the rhesus positive child. But the anti-D antibodies that form for the first time will remain in the blood circulatory of the mother. Okay, now if the mother is pregnant for the second time with a rhesus positive child, then the NTD antibodies, okay, which remains in the blood, now will enter the fetal blood circulatory system through the placenta and attack the red blood cells of the fetus. So this will actually cause agglutination and hemolysis of the fetus blood. 
So the fetus may suffer damage of internal organs such as the brain, the liver and they may have jaundice, they may have anemia which can actually lead to that. So when the mother is negative and the baby is positive, so this is dangerous if it's a second time pregnancy. First time, no problem. Okay? All right. Okay, so we are done with subtopic 10.5. Go through the notes again. Go do your notes. Revise. And once you are done, you are confident, you have to do formative practice 10.5 from page 186 to test your understanding. Do it by yourself and then you can check. Okay, now the questions are like this. Number one, state the blood group which is the universal donor. Easy. Okay, predict what will happen if the blood group of both recipient and donor is not compatible. Yeah, you know. Alright, three babies now. This is Kvat, your hot question. Three babies, P, Q and R have the same, have blood groups B, O and A, B respectively. Now, three pairs of parents have the following blood group. First pair, second pair, third pair given. So now you have to match the babies with the correct parents. Try to do the matching and let's see how it goes. Okay, now, an RH positive male marries a RH negative female. So the first RH positive child is alive, but the second child, who is also RH positive, did not survive. Now explain why. Go back to the slides, you will know why, yeah? Okay? All right, so that's it. Okay, so we are done. So with that, I will with that I will just end my video here. Um, thank you for watching, and please do not forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Bye bye.